ಇಲ್ಲರೆಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಚಕ್ರವರ್ತಿಜಿ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದನ್ ಜಿ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಯುವ ಬ್ರಿಗೇಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಶ್ಡ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜೆಂಟಲ್ಮನ್ ವಿತ್ ಯೋರ್ ಪರ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಅಶ್ಯೋರ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ಆನ್ ಮೈ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಸಿಟ್ I would speak a few words in Kannada. Yuva Brigade as the name signifies is a brigade for the future of India. Subhash Chandra Bose was a youth leader. And it was Subhash Chandra Bose who had who had inspired the youth of India to stand up and fight for the freedom of our nation. It is unfortunate that the true story of india's freedom struggle has not been written and prescribed in the textbooks of our schools and colleges no nation can prosper if it loses the thread of history heritage and culture and it is because of this that the open platform for netaji in 2012 had met the then honorable chief minister of gujarat Sri Narendra Modi ji and requested him to kindly put pressure on the central government so that the true history of India's freedom struggle is written and placed before our great nation Narendra Modi ji had told us that yes he would take it up with the central government at the appropriate time elections were held in 2014 and the government at delhi changed the nda government came to power and sri narendra modi ji became the prime minister of india we reminded sri narendra modi ji that when you were the chief minister of gujarat we had requested you to take up the issue of rectification of history now you are the prime minister of india don't you think it is your moral duty to implement what you had stated earlier i am happy to state that sri narendra modi ji has created history himself by declassifying the netaji files on the 23rd of january 2016 and by doing so for the first time in the history of independent india a government is born a government which believes in transparency a government 
विच बिलीव सत्य में वे जयते इट इज रिटर्न इन आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सत्य में वे जयते बट इट हैज नेवर बीन इंप्लीमेंटेड इन इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया सो ट्वेंटी थर्ड जनवरी टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन is a historic day that first time a government a transparent government was born which happens to be the 119th birth anniversary of the liberator of india netaji subhash chandra bose since 1857 i would talk about the history for a while and then we would come to the relevance of subhash chandra bose in 21st century india what does subhash chandra bose mean to the yuva to the youth of india today as you know in 1857 when the sepoy uprising took place that was the first battle for india's freedom it had started way back in 1857 there were revolutionaries and freedom fighters like mangal pande shahid bhagat singh khudiram bose binoy badol dinesh and many many others who sacrificed their lives by going to the gallows yes there was the non violent movement of mahatma gandhi it had its contribution it made people aware that as a nation we should we should be free but gandhi ji's movement had serious limitations you cannot drive out the might of british imperialism by begging freedom has to be won you have to snatch freedom freedom cannot be begged or negotiated i will come to that later about the azad hind forge battle but first i would like to state why did india lose its freedom to the british empire anybody do you know why we lost well that is a reason which was later which came up but the battle of plassey if you recall when the east india company came to india they had first come for business and trade they did not initially come to capture india but they realized that india is one of the richest nations of the world and if we can capture india and steal all the wealth from india then britain would become one of the richest nations therefore robert clive gave the leadership and came to india and attacked the battle of plassey is one of the historic battles that was fought but sirajuddolla was a great warrior he probably would not have lost so easily but why did sirajuddolla lose anyone because of mirzafar but do you know his senapati was mirzafar but the main issue here is many many mirzafars were born in india for over 200 years and that is why india was under british domination for 200 years because of mirzafars who were born britain ruled india with the help of indians in the british armed forces there were indians the british indian navy the british indian army and the british indian air force had indian soldiers so it was with the help of indians that britain could rule india for 200 years but there were these unsung heroes there were these revolutionaries who did not hesitate to give up their lives we have forgotten the heroes 
for whom we are free today. The time has come and it is the responsibility of the government. It is the responsibility of every Indian that we should recognize the contribution of the freedom fighters who gave their lives so that we could breathe in free India today. Yes, Shubhash Bose was a brilliant academic, was a brilliant student. He sat for the ICS, Indian Civil Service Examination. Yes, he stood forth. Do you know Shubhash Chandra Bose got only eight months to prepare for the ICS examination. It was a two-year, full-time two-year course. But Shubhash did not have the time. He studied for eight months and sat for the exam. And he stood forth. If he could get two years, the full term, probably Shubhash Bose would have stood first in the ICS examination. But what we find in Shubhash Bose's character, he always chose the difficult path. ICS examination, career in ICS is a very comfortable position and assignment. But Shubhash Bose realized that the call of the nation is more important than a comfortable position in the ICS. He decided he cannot serve the Britishers because Britishers were ruling India. We were slaves. We were enslaved under the British domination. So he resigned from the ICS. He resigned from a most comfortable career and plunged into the freedom movement of our nation. In 1922, Shubhash Chandra Bose joined the Congress platform. I would like to state that the Congress was not a political party in those days. It was a platform to fight for India's freedom. And everyone, whoever was interested to fight for the India's freedom, joined the Congress platform. So I would refer to it as Congress platform and not a political party as it is today. My grandfather, Sharat Chandra Bose, Shubhash Bose's elder brother, also was a senior leader of the Congress platform. He served the Congress platform for 42 years, much more than Shubhash Chandra Bose. But he had to resign from the Congress platform because of differences with Pandit Nehru and Mahatma Gandhi over the partition of Bengal and partition of India. I will come to that a little later, but I would like to state that within 10 years of contributing in the Congress platform, Shubhash Chandra Bose rose to become the president of the Congress platform. It was a meteoric rise in 1938, the Haripura Congress Shubhash Bose was elected as the president, but he was very inclusive. That time it was not politics, it was one goal, and Shubhash Bose had that one focus like Arjuna had. As you all know, if you have read the Mahabharat, Arjuna, when he had to win over Draupadi, the test that he had to undergo with his bow and arrow, he had to pierce the eye of the fish. So Arjuna was asked that, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the wheel up there? Arjuna said, I am not looking at anything, but I am looking at the cornea of the eye of the fish, which I would pierce with my bow and arrow. The same focus Shubhash Chandra Bose had, like Arjuna had, for the freedom of this nation. In 1938, it was Shubhash Chandra Bose who formed the first planning committee of India. 
he realized that you need to plan shubhash bose stood for political freedom economic freedom and social freedom a country cannot progress unless you have these triple bondage you see britain had kept india under triple bondage of political social and economic freedom he wanted complete independence both political social and economic we have achieved political freedom but i would like to question the yuva who are present here have we achieved shubhash bose's ideal of social and economic freedom in 2016 it is a debatable subject we can discuss over hours but i will come to that now in 1938 shubhash bose sat with the congress working committee he gave a proposal that we must have an armed struggle to drive the british imperialist power from india no mahatma gandhi and pandit nehru stated that we will negotiate freedom have you ever heard anywhere in the world that you can negotiate freedom even if today somebody is arrested either you have to pay a ransom or you have to fight to get out of your clutches of your uh, you know kidnapper you cannot beg for freedom so in 1939 the differences started mounting but i would like to state in 1939 the tripuri congress election subhash chandra bose was reelected for the second time as the president of the congress platform that time it was not a political battle it was a battle for india's freedom but it is very unfortunate that mahatma gandhi who subhash bose respected had great honor for mahatma gandhi it was subhash chandra bose who had called mahatma gandhi the father of the nation from southeast asia but mahatma gandhi put up a separate candidate for the congress presidential election in 1939 pattabhi sitaramaiya but subhash bose was a mass leader was a popular leader he had total support within the congress platform and he defeated pattabhi sitaramaiya in 1939 I would like to tell my friends in the Congress party today that the 1939 presidential election was the last democratic election that the Congress has seen the Subhash Chandra Bose's election of 1939 Tripuri Congress After that the president is selected and not elected selected from a dynastic family it is a disgrace that the that india is one of the largest democracies in the world but a national political party's elections are held only from within a dynasty ye kya baat hai this is amazing either you say that your party is a dictatorship be honest adolf hitler had declared himself as a dictator he did not mince his words so either you say you believe in a democratic setup you believe in a democratic election or you say that no we believe in a dynasty or we believe in dictatorship however 1939 in spite of becoming the congress platform president for a second term after defeating gandhi ji's candidate pattabhi sitaramaiya subhash bose found it very difficult to work within the working committee he was opposed at every step he realized that the congress leadership in 
did not have the charisma, the talent, or the expertise to drive out the British from Indian subcontinent. That is why he resigned from the Congress presidentship. And do you know, he was expelled from the party subsequently. I would like to know from the Congress party today, when they have meetings, they still put Shubhash Bose's photograph on the dais. They say that he, he was our leader. He was our Congress president. Of course he was. He was the last elected president that you have had. It's a fact. But you do not have, you cannot put Shubhash Bose's picture on your dais because the expulsion order which was issued in 1940 is still valid. The Presidency College had rusticated Shubhash Chandra Bose because Professor Oten had said certain derogatory, made certain derogatory remarks about fellow Indians. Shubhash Bose had protested. There, therefore, he was rusticated from the college. But at least the Presidency College has the decency to withdraw the expulsion order. But the Congress party today doesn't have the decency to withdraw the expulsion order of the last elected Congress president that they had. These are historical facts which are suppressed. Now Shubhash Bose went, he realized that the Congress does not have, the Congress platform does not have the charisma to attain freedom for the nation. That is why he went abroad to take the help of foreign nations. He went to Germany. It was probably not the ideal partnership, but Shubhash Bose was a pragmatist. A lot of people have said that Shubhash Bose was a fascist. A lot of people say that he was a leftist. A lot of people say he was a communist. Shubhash Bose was neither a fascist, nor a leftist, nor a rightist, nor a middleman. But Shubhash Bose was a pragmatist. And today, I find similar characteristics in the present Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Bodhiji. He is also a pragmatist. Shubhash Chandra Bose was one of the first nationalists of India. And we can be proud today that Sri Narendra Modi ji is the nationalist of India of 2016. When we had approached Sri Narendra Modi ji, we have been writing to all the Prime Ministers of India, right from Pandit Nehru to Dr. Manmohan Singh, that please declassify the files, please release the files. The people of India would like to know what happened to the liberator of India, Shubhash Chandra Bose. No one bothered for the last 69 years. The first Prime Minister in independent India who had the guts to honor Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose, the liberator of India. Only a leader recognizes another leader. I would give an example. When Shubhash Bose went to Germany, he had to wait for a very long time to meet the Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler. He probably disliked Adolf Hitler, but he had no option. Between the Congress platform 
and Adolf Hitler, he thought the German army is definitely in a better position to drive out the British out of India. So he was a pragmatist. So my enemy's enemy is my friend. That is the policy he adopted. He had to wait for a long time. And Adolf Hitler gave him the appointment. So when he went to meet Adolf Hitler, the procedure followed in the Führer's office that you had to wait in a hall and many of Adolf Hitler's doubles used to come and meet the visitor and go away. Seven, eight of these doubles came, saw Subhash Chandra Bose sitting and reading a newspaper and they went away. And then finally Adolf Hitler came and Subhash Bose stood up. So Adolf Hitler asked Subhash that how do you know that I am the actual Adolf Hitler? Because eight of my doubles have come and seen you and you have not bothered to get up. But why did you get up now? This is a story that I have heard from Subhash Bose's colleagues of the Indian Legion in Germany. So Subhash told Adolf Hitler when he was shaking hands. That picture, a lot of you might have seen, Subhash Bose meeting Adolf Hitler and shaking hands. So he told Adolf Hitler that only Adolf Hitler can put his hand on Subhash Chandra Bose's shoulder. The actual Adolf Hitler came in and put his hand on Subhash's shoulder and he realized that this was Adolf Hitler. And then they had discussion. Hitler could have just assassinated, eliminated Subhash Chandra Bose. He was a, some sort of a mad person, as you know. But of course, his love for his nation, his love for Germany, you cannot question. But he was a ruthless dictator. But why didn't he take any action on Subhash Chandra Bose? Do you know when Subhash Bose was talking, one-to-one -one discussion with Adolf Hitler, Subhash Bose mentioned to him that Herr Hitler, you see, Subhash had to do a crash course in Germany because Adolf Hitler was very anti-British. Although he knew English, he would never speak in English. So a crash course Subhash had to undergo in order to speak to Adolf Hitler in German. So Subhash said, Herr Hitler, that is Mr. Hitler, you must delete the paragraphs that you have written in your biography, Mein Kampf. Many of you might have read Mein Kampf. He said, you know nothing about India. You may be a German. You are European. He was Austrian by birth, Hitler. But you don't know anything about the rich heritage and culture of Bharat, India. I insist that you delete what you have written about India and Indians because you are ignorant about India. Hitler could have just killed him with one bullet. But Hitler realized, here was a leader, here was a freedom fighter, here was a revolutionary who was tantamount or equal to him. That is why he let him go. This was one-to-one -one discussion. Maybe Subhash Bose was lying. Subhash Bose probably did not have these discussions. But he made a statement, a public statement, sitting in Berlin. He clearly made a statement to Hitler's Germany. Hitler was trying to attack the Soviet Union. And Subhash Chandra Bose made a statement that the German aggression of the Soviet Union would be opposed by India and Indians. We would not tolerate aggression of Germany. Again, he would have been eliminated, but he did not. Because Hitler realized the strength 
that Subhash Chandra Bose had. From where did Subhash Chandra Bose get this strength? He got it from Swami Vivekananda. At the age of 13, Subhash Bose had left his home to become a spiritual leader. A lot of people probably are not aware of this, but he realized that the call of the nation, the responsibility that he has to liberate his motherland is more important to completely lead a spiritual existence. That is why he came back. But his spiritual guru was none other than Swami Vivekananda. My father, Amiyanath Bose, was very close to his uncle, Shubhash. They even shared the same bedroom for about six years. And my father used to say, when Shubhash was very upset, very annoyed with happenings in the Congress platform, he used to sit down at night and meditate for about three to four hours. That is how he got his strength. He was a very spiritual person, a very adhattic person. And that is how Swamiji is responsible to ignite the freedom fervor in Shubhash Chandra Bose. You know those words, awake, arise, and stop not till the goal is reached. Shubhash Bose practiced Swamiji's words. He did not stop till India is liberated. He followed the principle and ideology of Swami Vivekananda right till the end, right till his death. But today, India doesn't even know how Shubhash Chandra Bose met his end. It is a disgrace, it is a shame that 70 years have passed and we have not even found out what had finally happened to Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose. So it is now that the government is taking the right steps and the right effort for the first time. It is not only Shubhash Chandra Bose, it is all the heroes, the unsung heroes, right from 1857 onwards, all of them would be given their due place, recognition and honor. That is the demand that the people of this nation has done to Narendra Modiji government. And the government has assured the people of India that each one of them would be given their rightful place and honor. Now Shubhash Bose from Germany, he realized that geographically Germany is too far. It is not possible to attack British India from German soil because it is too far. So he realized that he has to go to Southeast Asia. Now during the Second World War, how can one go to Southeast Asia? He approached Adolf Hitler. Many people say, many enemies of the nation, many enemies of Shubhash Chandra Bose say that Adolf Hitler did not even help Shubhash Bose. So how did Shubhash Bose go to Southeast Asia, to Japan? It was Adolf Hitler who organized the submarine, a 90-day submarine. No man on earth has ever undertaken a 90-day submarine journey during conditions of Second World War. Hitler gave him the submarine, he proceeded. But do you know, again, Shubhash Bose took the difficult path. When the submarine reached the coast of Madagascar, you see, here we visit the sea beach. In Mangaluru, I went and saw the very calm sea. We go to Gopalpur, we go to Puri. 
You don't see tidal waves 30 feet high. Off the coast of Madagascar, 30 feet high tidal waves are there. Under such conditions, Shubhash Bose's U-boat had reached Madagascar coast and he had to cross over to the Japanese submarine. The German captain of the submarine has written a biography which we read. He stated that this was an unusual person, Shubhash Chandra Bose. He wanted to cross over, over 30 feet high tidal waves. It is impossible. So the German captain told Shubhash Bose, we have to go back because no way we can go anywhere near the Japanese boat. We will collide and both the submarines would sink. All of us would be dead. My Führer Adolf Hitler has given me permission to reach you to a point, but not to die. So I cannot take the risk. I don't have the permission to die. I have the permission to reach you to Madagascar coast. Now you have to make your own way. I cannot go near. Shubhash Bose said that you please organize something else. So the captain of the German submarine said, I will give you a small raft on the high seas, 30 feet high tidal waves. Just imagine a small raft. You and your people can get into that and sail across. But I suggest you don't do it because survival is not even 0.1%. Shubhash said, I have come all the way to liberate my motherland. I have not come back to go back to Germany. <laughs> Shubhash Bose with his ADC, with his assistant, Abid Hassan, got into that small raft and went across. The captain of the German submarine writes, that I could see the raft going up on the tidal wave and sinking. I was absolutely sure that these people would be dead. But he did not die. Shubhash Bose could reach the Japanese uh, submarine. And that is why I feel Shubhash Bose did not die in the air crash. Because his liberation war was still on. He did reach Manchuria, and from Manchuria, he did go into the Soviet Union. A person whose life is based on the teachings of Swamiji cannot die so easily. He reached and he took over the reins from Rash Bihari Bose. He took the leadership of the Azad Hind Forge, the Indian National Army. Now history has been distorted. I think the time has come. We expose the traitors of India. Who are the traitors who have distorted the history? When did India become free? Was it 15th of August 1947? Yes, Yuva Brigade. When did India become free for the first time? Anyone who can answer? It was not 15th of August 1947. That is incorrect. Zero marks. 21st of October 1943, the first provisional government of free India was established at Singapore under the presidentship of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. This is the correct history. And today, I am happy to state that the government of India, under the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi ji, has decided to rectify history and put it down that it was 21st of October 1943 was the Independence Day of India. And it was what kind of independence? It was Akhan Bharat. It was United India. 
It was an independence of the entire Indian subcontinent. Then, when did the first time the Indian flag, हम लोग का जो तिरंगा झंडा है, पहले बार कब इसको आप लोग लड़ा है? अब बताइए, when was it hoisted for the first time? Anyone? No, not 15th August 1947. That is the distorted history written by traitors of this nation. It was 30th of September 1943 at Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And it was the first president of free India, Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose, who hoisted the tricolor as Shaheed and Swaraj Islands. <laughs> this history has also to be corrected. Then further, I would like to state, very successfully, successive Congress governments have distorted history. They are successful. They are very happy about it. But the people of India will not forgive you. The youth of India, the Yuva of India will not learn distorted history. They want to know the true story of the Indian freedom movement. First time on Indian soil, Indian subcontinent soil. When was the first time the Indian national flag was hoisted? Anyone? You have got zero marks till now. 14th of April, 1944. For the first time in the history of India's freedom battle, in the history of India's freedom movement, Colonel Shoikat Ali Malik of the Azad Hin Forge hoisted the Indian tricolor at Moirang in, a, in Manipur state. And Moirang was in the occupation of the provisional government of Azad Hin for three months. This history has been obliterated from the history books. So, the moral duty of the present government of India is to reinstate the correct history of India's freedom struggle. Yes, after three months, Britain again occupied Moirang and INA had to leave. But the other story doing the rounds Azad in Forge never surrendered to the British. It is written in textbooks that Azad in Forge surrendered with the Japanese Imperial Army. Incorrect. The Japanese Imperial Army surrendered, but not one soldier of Azad in Forge, Indian National Army, surrendered. The battle continued. Subhash Chandra Bose had stated 70,000 soldiers were recruited, joined the Indian National Army. People from South, your ancestors had great contribution to the freedom of this nation. People from Karnatak, people from Tamil Nadu, people from Kerala, People from Odisha, people from the Punjab, all over India, they had contributed and joined the Azad Hin Forge to fight for their motherland. Do you know 26,000 lost their lives, which is 44%? Nowhere in the history of any war across the world such sacrifice has been recorded. This kind of sacrifice of losing 44% of the soldiers for fighting for their motherland is in the history of Indian National Army. And this history has been obliterated, wiped out. We want 
the Indian people want, the nation wants, all nations who have fought for their freedom struggle, who have got inspiration from Subhash Chandra Bose, they want this history to be reinstated. Then after that, I would like to state how India actually attained freedom. Contribution was there of the revolutionaries right from 1857 onwards, I have already stated. There was also the non-violent movement of Mahatma Gandhi, which made people aware that we should be free. People didn't even know that you should be free. That you should hit back. No one knew. But Mahatma Ji said, but we want freedom. No one gives you freedom. You have to give it back. That was the true nature and character of Subhash Chandra Bose. He never tolerated any nonsense. So when the Azad in Forge soldiers and officers were brought back to India in 1946 and they were put up on trial as war criminals. Do you know what happened? There were three officers of the Indian National Army who were tried at the Red Fort in Delhi. Shanawas Khan, a Muslim, Prem Kumar Saigal, a Hindu, and Gurbak Singh Dhilan, a Sikh. They were tried as war criminals for fighting against and revolting against the British Empire. A very renowned lawyer, Bhula Bhai Desai, stood in the defense of these INA officers. The international law those days stated that if one nation declares war against another nation, for the freedom of that nation, you are heroes and not war criminals. That was the argument of Bhulabhai Desai. It is a fact that even Pandit Nehru put on his gown, lawyer's gown, and appeared on behalf of the war criminals. He was a briefless lawyer. But he put on his gown and appeared. I will tell you, a lot of people say that he admired Subhash Bose and the Indian National Army. If I have enough time, I will tell you that story also. How much Nehru admired Netaji and Azad in Poj. Little later, I will tell you. But I would like to tell you here what Bhulabhai Desai argued. The war tribunal, the British tribunal that was held, totally collapsed. They realized, yes, Bhulabhai Desai is right. They are fighting for their motherland. And it is the provisional government of Azad Hind, recognized by nine nations. All the power, Axis powers had supported and acknowledged this government. So a government is fighting against another government. It is not insurgency. It is not terrorism. It is a war for liberation. So all these officers were acquitted as heroes of India. But I understand that Shubhash Chandra Bose is still a war criminal in the books of the British Empire. And the government of India has not bothered to take up this issue with the United Nations. Shubhash Bose's officers were declared as heroes. But even today, is Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose still a war criminal? We would like to get those files declassified from the British government. I understand the NDA government has written to the British authorities for declassifying the MI5 and MI6 files of the British intelligence. Now, still, you see, the INA actually lost the battle. Everybody knows it lost the battle. It did not surrender, but it lost the battle all right. Is it true? Yes, the INA lost the battle, but won the war.
Do you know how? I will tell you how. I will give facts and figures. I don't want to make a statement which I cannot substantiate. It lost the battle but won the war. Because in 1956, Lord Clement Attlee had come to Kolkata and he was staying with the then acting governor of Bengal, Justice Fani Bhushan Chakravarti. He was also the Chief Justice of the Calcutta High Court. Justice Chakravarti asked Lord Clement Attlee, who was the Prime Minister of Great Britain during the transfer of power, he asked him that what made you leave India? Is it Gandhiji's quit India movement? Or is it something else? Because you won the war, actually Britain, the allied powers actually won the war. Second World War, you won. So if you win the war, why, why do you run away? You should have continued your empire in India. Lord Clement Attlee smiled and replied, Gandhiji's nonviolent movement had M I N I M A L effect, impact on the freedom movement. So then, you know, Justice uh, P. B. Chakravarti was more confused that Gandhiji's movement had no impact. You had won the Second World War. Phir, what's the current? Ab kyu chale gaye? Then came the reply. The battle of the Indian National Army, Subhash Chandra Bose, and the subsequent INA trials, which were held at the Red Fort in Delhi in 1946, completely destroyed the loyalty and allegiance of the British Indian forces to the British Empire. These are not my words. Lord Clement Attlee, who signed the transfer of power papers, said it. This is documented, but this document is being suppressed by successive Congress governments. So we requested Narendra Modi ji, ye document aap nikaliye aur Bharat desh ke saamne pesh dijiye. P.P. Chakravarti has documented this in a book. That book is not available. That it was the INA trials which caused the naval mutiny in Mumbai. The British Army and the British Air Force revolted across the country. You see, the Indian, the British Indian forces had Indians. Like I said, Britain could rule India with the help of Indians, with the help of Mirzafars. When the British Indian soldiers and officers saw that we are fighting against our own brothers and sisters of the Indian National Army. This is something which we cannot accept. How can you fight with your own brother and sister? So they revolted. And because of this revolt, Britain realized time is up and they left India. Now, you don't have to even accept Lord Clement Attlee. My father, Amiyonath Bose, met the last Viceroy of India. Who was he? Ah, Mountbatten. This was in 1976. You know, in 1979, Lord Mountbatten was assassinated by an IRA bomb blast. In 76, my father, Amiyonath Bose, and my elder brother, Surya Kumar Bose, who met Narendra Modi ji in Berlin when he went. Surya Bose is based in Germany. Surya Bose also was with my father in 1976. They met Lord Mountbatten. Lord Mountbatten's assistant told my father that please don't ask too many questions. You can ask one question only, because he is not keeping very well. My father said, I will only ask one question, not, a, not two questions. So my father asked Lord Mountbatten, that what made you leave India? Because you won the war. Gandhiji's movement was over. Congress was not in a position to really bargain for freedom. 
softly, Lord Mountbatten stated, Indian National Army, Shubhash Chandra Bose, and the INA trials which completely raised the foundations of the British Empire. These are facts of history which has been obliterated from the history books. We will put it back. We have to work with a scheme. Any assignment must have a time frame. So we have taken a time frame that by 2019, the true history of Indian freedom movement would be placed in front of the nation. Now, regarding the declassification of files, 23rd January was the beginning, 2016 was the beginning of the process. Yesterday only, Mahesh Sharmaji, the Minister for Culture, Government of India, has made a statement that 23rd of February, 2016, a further 25 classified files would be declassified and put on the public domain. For the first time, an elected government of India is actually keeping to its commitment. Every month, 25 files, on the 23rd of every month, 25 files would be released and put on a website which all of you, all of you can access and see. What happened to Shubhash Chandra Bose? The story goes that there was an air crash and he died in that air crash. That was the Congress story. There is another story that he went through Manchuria. He either went to China or the Soviet Union. There is a third theory that he actually came back to India and lived as Bhagwanji in Faizabad. What is the truth? Deliberately, the previous central government of India tried to confuse the issue. Why confuse the issue? Who does it benefit? There were three commission of inquiries which were formed by the government of India. The first one was the Shanawas committee. Shanawas betrayed Shubhash Chandra Bose and the people of India. Why do I say it? Shanawas Khan was with the Indian National Army for 15 months only. For the rest of his life and career, he was with the Congress party. He was a cabinet minister in Nehru's government. Obviously, he would be loyal to Pandit Nehru. He has to be. If I work for someone, I have to be loyal to that person. Shanawas committee, there were three members. Shanawas Khan, this was in 1956. Shanawas Khan, Suresh Chandra Bose, who was Shubhash Chandra Bose's elder brother. And there was a civil servant, Mr. S. N. Moitro. Shanawas committee findings were that he died in the air crash. But Shanawas Saab never thought necessary to go to Taiwan. If an incident has happened in Taiwan, how can you sit in Delhi and write your report? I've never heard anything like this. Incident happens, first job is to go to the site. No, he thought not necessary because he had decided what to write in his report. So why should he go and cre create complications? But Suresh Chandra Bose submitted a dissentient report to the Shanawas committee. Where is that report? It was suppressed by the Congress Nehru government. We have demanded to the present NDA government that Suresh Chandra Bose's report be placed in the Houses of Parliament. What is the fear? If this man has not died. Why do you want to kill him? If he has not died on the 18th of August, 1945, why do you want to kill this man? 
there is no conclusive evidence till date to establish the air crash theory. So why is it that you are dying? Dissension report, Suresh Bose, with his own money, had published it and had put it in the market. The Congress party bought all the reports and burnt it. These are facts of history. We have presented a copy of the dissension report to the present Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, and requested him to have a discussion in Parliament and place it in the National Archives for researchers to study. Narendra Modi ji has committed to do this. People of India, members of the Bose family, now, Shubhash Chandra Bose doesn't belong to any family. Yes, it is a fact that I am privileged to be born into the Netaji Bose family. But Shubhash Bose had clearly told my father, Amyonath Bose, that my family, the people, each one of you, are Shubhash Chandra Bose's family. <laughs> Shubhash Chandra Bose, his entire nation was his family, and the nation belongs to Subhash Chandra Bose. This is the fact of history. People rejected the findings of the Shanawas Committee. A second commission of inquiry was formed called the Khosla Commission in the 1970s. In 72, 73, it started its work. Justice Khosla was a friend of the Nehru Gandhi family. So his job was very clear, that you must exactly to the letter write your report based on the Shanawas Committee report. So again, a false report was submitted. And Justice Khosla also did not visit the site. However, he wasted the taxpayers' money, he wasted your money, our money, and went to Taiwan. He sat in a hotel room and wrote his report. He feared that if he goes to the aerodrome where the crash was supposed to have taken place, or he goes to the crematorium where Shubhash Bose was supposed to have been cremated, he will probably get a shock. So he didn't dare to go there. He sat in the room and wrote his report that Shubhash Bose died in the air crash. The people of this great nation did not accept both these false reports subscribed by the government of India. Therefore, in 1999, the NDA government, under the leadership of Sri Atal Vihari Vajpayeeji, formed the third inquiry commission, Justice Mukherjee Commission. And it was the first time Justice Mukherjee was a very respectable judge of the Supreme Court of India. He decided that if I take up this assignment, I must work with sincerity. I must not do exactly what the other reports have done. What was that? Write a false report. I will not take the assignment, but if I take the assignment, I will write, I will do justice to the job, and I would go to Taiwan and see the records. I would like to also state, let's be fair, that even the then NDA government, although it appointed the Justice Mukherjee Commission in 1999, all records were not shown to Justice Mukherjee. I don't know what problems they had. If the NDA government would have got a second term, maybe the files would have been shown. But that five-year period, Justice Mukherjee did not get full cooperation even from the NDA government. I must state that. But he was allowed to go to Taiwan. He went to Taiwan. And do you know what he saw? He went to the aerodrome where the air crash was supposed to have taken place. He went through the records and he was shocked. There was no air traffic movement on the 18th of August, 1945 one week before and one week after. So huh, where is the air crash? Now you can say that after the Second World War, no proper record was kept at the aerodrome in 
Formosa, present-day Taiwan. But that's not correct. On the 25th of September 1945, there was an American bomber which had crashed at the same place. And full record is kept of the names of persons who died. The Americans who had died. So why shouldn't? It is an accident. It is not somebody has killed him. If an air accident takes place, why won't you write? Shubhash Chandra Bose, Commander-in-Chief of the Azadin Forge, died. General Shide, who was the general of the Japanese Imperial Army, died. Why won't you write? Then Justice Mukherjee went to the crematorium. Justice Mukherjee went to the crematorium. He went through the records. He was shocked. He saw a certificate, a death certificate of a gentleman called Ichiro Okura. Who is Ichiro Okura? A Japanese soldier who died of a heart attack. It has nothing to do with any air crash. He died of a natural cause of a heart attack. He was cremated and his ashes were kept at the Renkoji temple. Do you know government of India spends lakhs of money to keep those ashes at Renkoji temple? This is amazing. Those ashes should be given to Ichiro Okura's family. Poor chap Ichiro Okura's family could not get his ashes. Those are kept there because of falsification on the part of successive Congress government. What is the fear? If Shubhash Bose has died, what is the fear of keeping classified documents? If a man dies, you close the files. You don't open a file of a dead person. But till the late 90s, files are being created on the disappearance of Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose, who has died on the 18th of August, 1945. Nowhere in, anywhere in the world, I have seen a file being created of a person who has died 70 years back. So obviously he did not die. So Justice Mukherjee Commission, for the first time, the first commission of inquiry to do proper research. This is a question of research. It is a question of investigation. I may believe anything. Family members may believe anything. Scholars may believe anything that he died or he survived. But it is a question of conclusive, clinching evidence which would establish any of the theories. None of the theories are conclusive as on date. But Justice Mukherjee clearly said, Shubhash Bose did not perish in any air crash. Shubhash Bose went through Manchuria to the Soviet Union. Shubhash Bose is dead now. But how he died, he is not able to decipher because the documents were not made available to him. That is how the movement of declassification of Shubhash Bose files is imperative today. And we are very happy to state that the Narendra Modi ji government has acted positively to the call of the nation. We will have to wait till 2019 to find out the truth as to what happened to Shubhash Bose. In the meantime, we have also requested the government of India that we must have access to the erstwhile KGB archives. If Shubhash Bose was in Soviet Union, in Soviet Russia, KGB would certainly have files on Netaji. So we must have the files. So we requested the Prime Minister to ask the Russian authorities. And I would like to state that Shushma Swarajji, the Honorable External Affairs Minister, has officially sent a letter to her counterpart in Moscow that we want the KGB files to be released. Now we had met Narendra Modi ji on the 16th of December prior to his visit to Moscow. In fact, we are very happy that he was, he released a book, The Bose Brothers and the Indian Independence, an insider's account, published by my elder sister Madhuri Bose. And on that day, 
On the 16th of December, we requested the Honorable Prime Minister that when you visit Moscow, please request President Putin personally to release the KGB files pertaining to Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose. And I am again very happy to state that Sri Narendra Modi ji has kept his word. He had personally requested President Putin to release the KGB files. And President Putin has also made a statement that his government would cooperate with the government of India to release the files pertaining to Netaji. So we will have to wait. You see, India has been very tolerant. Today people talk about intolerance in our country. I don't think India is at all intolerant. India has been tolerant for the last 70 years, waiting to know the true history. If that true history is not known now, then maybe India would become intolerant. Therefore, India is a great nation. People like Bal Gangadhar Tilak, people like Gokhale, people like Swami Vivekananda, people like Ramakrishna Paramansa, people like Khudiram Bose, people like Shahid Bhagat Singh, people like Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose have taken birth on this great nation of ours. So it is the duty of the youth. You are the future of India. So I call upon the youth. Believe in the teachings of Swami Vivekananda and practice what Shubhash Chandra Bose actually preached and practiced and implemented the teachings of Swamiji. It is not too late. Everything is still not lost. We have lost many years. But I think we can still save this nation. But this nation can only be saved if we practice what Shubhash Bose had actually preached and practiced. Unity, faith and sacrifice. Today the youth must be inspired by the three things that Shubhash Bose had told the Azad Hind Forge soldiers when they went to the battlefront. That bhai or bhai no, ittefaq, ittebaad aur kurbani aapko dene padega. You must rise to the occasion of unity, faith and sacrifice. Give me blood and I will give you freedom. Only Shubhash Bose could demand this and the nation responded positively. So today, we want the youth of India. India is a nation of rich history, rich heritage and rich culture. We must not forget our roots. A nation cannot progress if the youth of this nation forget their roots. To aap log jago, you must awake, arise and continue till we can achieve prosperity. That prosperity is not for individual. That prosperity is for the nation. Collective prosperity, that is what Shubhash Bose stood for. And today, I think we have found a leader. After many, many years, almost after 70 years, maybe we have found a leader in Sri Narendra Modi ji, who is inspired by the two great men who we remember the most today, Swami Vivekananda and Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose. A nationalist party cannot ignore 
the ideology of swami ji and subhash chandra bose that is why my proposal was to the bharatiya janata party that if you are a nationalist party if you believe in nationalism if you believe that india should remain united if you really want to know what secularism is listen and practice the ideology of swami vivekananda and netaji subhash chandra bose and i am again very happy to tell the youth who are assembled here that this proposal has been accepted by the leadership of the bharatiya janata party the other issue is about development subhash bose and swami vivekananda who i consider were the makers of modern india the true makers of modern india swami ji believed in modern science and technology i think lot of you are there from the information technology field today we have to believe in modern science and technology then only we can move forward in the 21st century and as way back swami ji and subhash bose wanted india to have a military a strong military leadership industry and certainly india was an agrarian society but what happened to india our economy is lopsided still for the first 10 years after independence we should have concentrated on improving our agrarian society agriculture but there were serious flaws of the first two terms of the first government of india they stressed on industry first certainly industry has to come up but not neglecting agriculture and farming because india primarily was an agrarian society you stabilize farming and agriculture and then move on to industry if subhash bose would have returned to india india would have been what singapore is today the same structure subhash bose would have followed as was followed in singapore singapore got independence much later than india singapore got independence in 1965 only but see where that nation has prospered yes it is a very small nation that is a fact but they have progressed because they have been very focused you a nation must know what are the strong point, points that it has india was a very strong nation on the agrarian side as it was neglected even today as a nation we are not able to feed our population it is a disgrace subhash bose is this is not the india that netaji had dreamt for netaji wanted india to be extremely prosperous at least we could feed the nation but it is not late let us bring back the ideology let us see whether we can achieve economic and social freedom and yes we need to be inclusive a word which is being used secularism or people talk about sampradayikata sampradayik what is sampradayik what is secularism there is nothing known as secularism by the way if you follow the ideology of subhash chandra bose you will maintain communal harmony across the country across the nation across the world because he practiced secularism it is good to give a speech from a dais and talk about communal harmony if you don't practice it in the azad in forge subhash bose practiced secularism and communal harmony in the azad in government and in azad in forge 
there were Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs who ate together, slept together and fought together for the freedom of their motherland. Do you know there was one kitchen in the Azad Hind Forge? All used to eat from one kitchen. The British armed forces had separate kitchens for Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs and others. But Shubhash Bose made it one kitchen. This was the unity that he could influence among the people. Then he realized People used to greet each other in the morning. Some people used to say adab. Some people said namaste. Somebody said good morning. He said this will not work. So he coined a phrase. What is that phrase? Yes. He said Jai Hind. Today we also use it. But do we know how, why it was actually came into force? Everyone in the Azadin Forge and the Azadin government started greeting people only by saying Jai Hind. And it is a very good thing that today the Indian Army and the Indian police forces has adopted this phrase Jai Hind when they greet each other. And even the Indian Army today has only one kitchen. This certain things, at least the armed forces and the police forces have imbibed and learned from the provisional government of Azad Hind, the first free government of India and the Azad in Forge. So, friends, we can continue discussing, but I think there are other speakers as well waiting to say what they want to say. But one message I would like to give to the youth of this nation, that it is not lost. The youth of this nation can still make India one of the best and greatest nations of the world. It is your duty. So you will have to rise to this occasion. You will have to rise to this occasion because people like Swami Vivekananda, people like Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose were born in this land in this sacred great land of India and they have shown us the path. It is for the youth today to go on that path and take India forward. With these words, I would like to thank the organizers of the Yova Brigade for giving this opportunity to come and say a few words in front of you. I will come back again. I very much like this city of Bangalore. I will come back. I have never seen so much warmth from people of Bangalore. I, have, I travel across the country, but this is a welcome that I have received very rarely. Jai Hind! Jai Hind! Jai Hind! Bharat Mata Ki! Bharat Mata Ki! Bharat Mata Ki! Jananim Sharadam Devi, Ramakrishnam Jagadgurum, Pada Padme, Tayor Shritva, Pranamami Mahur Muhu, Ratnakara, Dhautapadam, Himalaya Kritinim, Brahma, Rajarshi Ratnatyam, Vande Bharata Mataram, Vedikimilas Niragirva, Adarni Chandra Kumar Bosti, Atyanta Priti Purkava, the Krithagan, the Melder Parvagi, Summer Pestinimitra, and Gotu Elru, Tumba Turtu, Argento Laidiri, in fact, Auru Tumba Argental Iron Tore, now Yellow Argental Divi. Tumba Hotilla on the Hatu Nimshagala Kala Hedbeka, the Kelebe Kelu Sangatil and Nimjata Hunch Coltini. Model Nedu, Neta Jiva Vichara the Lee, Navelru Papigle Neta Jiva, Anyaya Madurali, Nana Patra Vuide, Nima Patra Vuide, Sarkar the Patra Vuide, Yelru Serko, Neta Jiva Anyaya Madidivi. Adu Ivatin and Nenea Anyaya La, E. Desha the Nijava the leader Yarunta Gurti Soder in the Hidu, Neta Ji Tirkondi Denge and other Kuritante Yao, you have stepped with your Yeladru Mosamadi. 
ಈ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿಯವರ ನಂತರ ಈ ದೇಶವನ್ನು ಲೀಡ್ ಮಾಡಬಹುದಾದಂತ ಮುಂದಿನ ನಾಯಕ ಯಾರು ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಹೇಳಿದ್ವಿ ಸ್ವತಃ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ಗಾಂಧೀಜು ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರುನೇ ನನ್ನ ನಂತರದ ಲೀಡರ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಆದರೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಲಿ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಅವರಿಗಿಂತ ನೂರು ಪಟ್ಟು ಸಮರ್ಥರಾಗಿದ್ದ ಲೀಡರ್ ಯಾವ್ದಾದ್ರು ಇದ್ರೆ ಅನುಮಾನವೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರೆ ಆಗಿದ್ರು ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಕಾಲೇಜಿಗೆ ಹೋಗಿದ್ರು ಅವರು ಕೂಡ ವಿದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಓದ್ದವರು ಆದ್ರೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಓದಿದ್ರು ಏನು ಅಂತ ಇವತ್ತಿಗೂ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೋ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಸಾರಿ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಮಾತ್ರ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅವರ ಇಡೀ ಪೀಳಿಗೆ ಇಡೀ ಪರಂಪರೆ ಕೇಳಿ ನೋಡಿ ಆದ್ರೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಅಧ್ಯಯನಕ್ಕೆ ಅಂತ ಐ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಪಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅಂತ ಹೋದ್ರು ಯು ಗಾಟ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಓದಿದ್ ಎಂಟೇ ತಿಂಗಳು ಬೇರೆಯವರೆಲ್ಲ ಎರಡೆರಡು ವರ್ಷ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾದ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಂಟು ತಿಂಗಳ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಮಾಡಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ತಗೊಂಡ್ ಬಂದ್ರು ತನ್ನ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿಕ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಅತ್ಯದ್ಭುತವಾಗಿ ಸಮಾಜದ ಮುಂದೆ ಇಟ್ಟರು ಐ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷೆ ಮುಗಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದ ಪರಮ ಪುಣ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ಐ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷೆ ಮುಗಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡ ನಂತರ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಗಿ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಲಕ್ಷಾಂತರ ಜನರನ್ನ ಆಳಬಹುದಾಗಿದ್ದಂತ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ಪಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾಗ ಈ ದೇಶಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂದು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ನಾನು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕೆಲಸವನ್ನ ಧಿಕ್ಕರಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ಅಂತ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷರಿಗೆ ಚಾಲೆಂಜ್ ಮಾಡಿದವರು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಮಿತ್ರ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಲಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಅವರ ತಂದೆ ಅವರನ್ನು ಒತ್ತಾಯ ಮಾಡಿ ಕಳಿಸಿದ್ದು ಪಾಸ್ ಆಗ್ತೀಯ ಡೌಟ್ ಇದೆ ನಿಂಗೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಅವರು ಪಾಸ್ ಆಗ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಹೆದರಿಕೆಯಿಂದ ಹೋಗೋದಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೆ ನನಗೆ ಒಂದೇ ಒಂದು ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಇರೋದು ಏನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅಕಸ್ಮಾತ್ ನಾನು ಪಾಸ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಚಾಕ್ರಿ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಇಷ್ಟ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದಾಗ ಅಪ್ಪ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ನೀನ್ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಹೋಗು ಪಾಸ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ಸಾಕು ಅಂತ ಅಪ್ಪ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ರು ಹೋದ ಮೇಲೆ ಇವನ್ ತಲೆ ಬದಲಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಅವರು ಮಿತ್ರರು ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ರು ದೇಶಭಕ್ತಿ ಎಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಈ ಪುಣ್ಯಾತ್ಮನಿಗೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಲಂಡನ್ಗೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಒಂದ್ ತಿಂಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಎಂಟು ತಿಂಗಳ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಇವರ ತಾತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಅವರ ಅಣ್ಣನಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ಪತ್ರ ಅವ್ರು ಬರೆದ್ರು ಅಣ್ಣ ನನಗೆ ಲಂಡನ್ಗೆ ಬಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ಬಹಳ ಖುಷಿ ಆಗ್ತಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಯಾಕೆ ಖುಷಿ ಆಗ್ತಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಾನು ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ನನ್ನ ದೇಶದ ಜನರ ಹತ್ರ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷರು ತಮ್ಮ ಬೂಟ್ ಪಾಲಿಶ್ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಕಾಲನ್ನು ತೊಳಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷರು ಬಂದು ನನ್ನ ಬೂಟ್ ಅನ್ನ ಪಾಲಿಶ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ಹೆಂಗ್ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬರ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಅಂತಾರು ಈ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ಅವರದ್ದಾದ್ರೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಲಂಡನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ ಲಂಡನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ರು ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಅವರ ತಂದೆ ಮೋತಿಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ಗೆ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರುಗೆ ಒಂದು ಮಾತು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ನೋಡು ನೀನು ಲಂಡನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರ ಜೊತೆ ಬೇಕಿದ್ರು ಹೋಗು ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ ಜೊತೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಡ ಅವ್ನು ನಿನ್ನ ತಲೆ ಕೆಡಿಸ್ ನಿನ್ನ ಹಾಳು ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತಾನೆ ಅಂತ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ ಸಂಪರ್ಕಕ್ಕೆ ಯಾವತ್ತೂ ಬರಲೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಹಾಳಾಗಿಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ ಸಂಪರ್ಕಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂದಿದ್ರೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಇವತ್ತು ಈ ದೇಶದ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಹೀಗಿರ್ತಿರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ದುರ್ದೈವದ ಸಂಗತಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಗೋಯ್ತು ಈ ದೇಶಕ್ಕೆ ವಾಪಸ್ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಬಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿಗೆ ಬಹಳ ಖುಷಿ ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ತು ಯಾರೋ ಒಬ್ಬ ತನ್ನ ಇಡೀ ಶ್ರೀಮಂತಿಕೆ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಖಾದಿ ಹಾಕೊಂಡು ಗಾಂಧಿ ಟೋಪಿ ಹಾಕೊಂಡು ತಿರುಗಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನನ್ನ ಉತ್ತರಾಧಿಕಾರಿ ಇವನೇ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಆದ್ರೆ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿ ಅವರನ್ನ ಎದುರು ಹಾಕೊಂಡು ಮಾತನಾಡಬಲ್ಲ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ಇದ್ದಿದ್ದು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರಿಗೆ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿಯನ್ನ ಹಿಂದೆ ಆಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಿದ್ದು ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಈ
ಈ ದೇಶವನ್ನ ಆಳಿದ ಆನಂತರದ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ನವರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ದೇಶವನ್ನ ಯಾವ ದಿಕ್ಕಿಗೆ ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲದೆ ಹೋದಾಗ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರು ಈ ದೇಶದ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಿಟಿ ಹೆಂಗಿರಬೇಕು ಈ ದೇಶದ ಆಡಳಿತ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ಹೆಂಗಿರಬೇಕು ಈ ದೇಶದ ಸೈನ್ಯ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ಹೆಂಗಿರಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಾರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಆಲೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಆ ಮನುಷ್ಯನ ದೂರದೃಷ್ಟಿಯ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಅಂತ ಆ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಆರ್ಡಿನರಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಮಿತ್ರ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಲಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರು ನಂಗೆ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಬಹಳ ಇದೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಹುಚ್ಚಿನಿಂದ ಮಾತನಾಡೋಣ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಹೇಳಬೇಕಾಗಿರುವ ಕೆಲವು ಸಂಗತಿಗಳನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರು ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಆರ್ಮಿ ಕಟ್ಟದಾಗ ಆರ್ಮಿ ಸುಮ್ ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಕಟ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ದುಡ್ಡು ಬೇಕು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಯಾರು ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ದುಡ್ಡು ಹಿಟ್ಲರ್ ಹೇಳಿದ ನಾನು ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ದುಡ್ಡನ್ನ ದುಡ್ಡನ್ನು ತಗೊಳ್ಳಿ ನೀವು ಆರ್ಮಿ ಕಟ್ಟಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮೇಲೆ ನನಗೆ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಇದೆ ನೀವು ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷರನ್ನ ಸೋಲಿಸಿ ಭಾರತವನ್ನು ಮುಕ್ತಗೊಳಿಸಿ ಬಲ್ರಿ ಅಂತಂದಾಗ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಹಂಗೆ ಸುಮ್ ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ದುಡ್ಡು ತಗೊಳಕಾಗತ್ತಾ ನೀವೇನು ಭಿಕ್ಷೆ ಕೊಡೋದ ನಾನು ಏನು ಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಭಾರತದ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರ ಭಾರತದ ಸರ್ಕಾರವನ್ನು ಮೊದಲು ಸ್ಥಾಪಿಸ್ತೀನಿ ನೀವು ಆ ಸರ್ಕಾರಕ್ಕೆ ಲೋನ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಭಾರತವನ್ನು ವಶಪಡಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಲೋನ್ ವಾಪಸ್ ತೀರಿಸ್ತೀವಿ ನಿಮ್ದೇನು ಭಿಕ್ಷೆ ಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದಿರಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಅವರು ಯಾವುದೂ ಹಣವನ್ನ ಅವರು ಭಿಕ್ಷೆಯಾಗಿ ತಗೊಳ್ಳಿಲ್ಲ ಸಾಲವಾಗಿ ಸ್ವೀಕಾರ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಜಗತ್ತಿನಾದ್ಯಂತ ಇದ್ದಂತ ಭಾರತೀಯರನ್ನ ಕೇಳಿಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಗಿವ್ ಮಿ ಯುವರ್ ಬ್ಲಡ್ ಐ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ನೀವು ನಿಮ್ ರಕ್ತವನ್ನ ಕೊಡಿ ನಾನು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಮಿತ್ರರೇ ಇವತ್ತು ಚಂದ್ರಕುಮಾರ್ ಬೋಸರು ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿರ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನಾನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಪೋಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದಾಗ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬುನೇ ಬಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ರೇನೋ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ತಿತ್ತು ನಂಗೆ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಅವರ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಅವರ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಕೇಳಿದೀನಿ ನಾನು ಹೀಸ್ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಈಸ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಅವರ ಅವ್ರ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಕೇಳಿದಾಗ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಆಕ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಇತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಫ್ರಿಲ್ ನಾನು ನೆನ್ನೆ ಉಡುಪಿನಲ್ಲೂ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಕಡೆ ಅಂತೂ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬುನೇ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದಾರಾ ಅನ್ಸೋ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ನನಗೂ ಫೀಲ್ ಆಗ್ತಿತ್ತು ವಾ ಎಷ್ಟು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ನಿಜಕ್ಕೂ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಲಕ್ಕಿ ಕೊನೆ ಪಕ್ಷ ಸುಭಾಷರ ಪರಂಪರೆಯ ಒಬ್ಬ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಅದು ತುಂಬ ದೂರ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅವರ ಮೊಮ್ಮಗನ ಹಂತದ ಒಬ್ಬ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ನಮ್ಮೊಂದಿಗೆ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಯಾವುದೋ ಜನದಲ್ಲಿ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಅಂತ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲಕ್ಕಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಬಹಳ ಸಂತೋಷ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರು ಆವತ್ತು ಮಾತನಾಡಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಹೆಂಗಿರಬಹುದು ಇವತ್ತು ಈ ಮಾತ್ನ ಮಾತಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಒಂದೊಂದು ಕಾಲು ಗಂಟೆಯ ಮಾತಿಗೆ ಅದು ಎಷ್ಟು ಸಲ ಚಪ್ಪಾಳೆ ಹೊಡೆದು ದೇವರೇ ಬಲ್ಲ ಅವತ್ತು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಾ ಸಿಂಗಪುರದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನರನ್ನ ಸೇರಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಿರ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಗಿವ್ ಮಿ ಬ್ಲಡ್ ಐ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಆ ಮಾತಿನ ತಾಕತ್ತು ಹೆಂಗಿತ್ತು ಗೊತ್ತೇನು ಒಂದು ಅಜ್ಜಿ ವಯಸ್ಸಾದ ಹೆಣ್ಮಗಳು ಎದ್ ಬಂದು ನಾನೇನಪ್ಪ ಕೊಡಲಿ ನನ್ನ ಹತ್ರ ಏನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಎರಡು ಚಿನ್ನದ ಬಳೆ ಇದೆ ತಗೋ ಇದನ್ನ ನಿನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಇದೆ ನನಗೆ ನೀನ್ ನನ್ನ ದೇಶಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯ ಕೊಡಿಸ್ತೀಯ ಅಂತ ತಗೋ ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷರ ಜೋಳಿಗೆ ತಂದು ಹಾಕ್ತಾಳಲ್ಲ ಹೆಂಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ಅಂತ ಮಿತ್ರರೇ ನಾನು ಅನೇಕ ಬಾರಿ ಓದಿ ರೋಮಾಂಚಿತನ ಆಗ್ತೀನಿ ಒಬ್ಬ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ತನ್ನ ಇಡೀಯ ತೋಟವನ್ನ ಅದು ಬಿಟ್ಟರೆ ಮತ್ತೇನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಇಡೀಯ ತೋಟವನ್ನ ಸುಭಾಷರಿಗೆ ಬರ್ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಇದನ್ನ ಮಾರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಎಷ್ಟು ದುಡ್ಡು ಬರುತ್ತೋ ತಗೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅದನ್ನ ನಿಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಆರ್ಮಿಗೆ ಬಳಸಿ ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬುನ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಹೆಂಗಿದ್ದಿರ್ಬೋದು ಸುಭಾಷರ ಮಾತು ಜನರಿಗೆ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲಿದ್ದ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಎಂಥದ್ದು ಅಂತ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಆದರೆ ದುರ್ದೈವ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರು ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ
ಕಾಲಾಪಾನಿಯ ಜೈಲಿಗೆ ಸೆಲ್ಯುಲಾರ್ ಜೈಲಿಗೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರು ಹೋಗಿ ಬಂದು ಒಂದು ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟರು ಸೆಲ್ಯುಲಾರ್ ಜೈಲಿಗೆ ಯಾಕೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ದೇಶಕ್ಕೆ ದೇಶದ ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಹೋರಾಡಿದ ಸಾವಿರಾರು ಕ್ರಾಂತಿಕಾರಿಗಳು ಭೇಟಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಜಾಗ ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರು ಹೋಗಿ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯ ಬಂದ ನಂತರ ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯ ಬಂದ ನಂತರ ಈ ದೇಶವನ್ನ ಆಳಿದ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷರುಗಳು ಇನ್ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷರುಗಳು ಈ ದೇಶವನ್ನು ಆಳದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಆ ಇಡೀ ಜೈಲನ್ನು ಒಡೆದು ಅಲ್ಲೊಂದು ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟಲ್ ಕಟ್ಟಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ಕ್ರಾಂತಿಕಾರಿಗಳ ಯಾವ ಕುರು ಇರಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರಿಗೂ ಇವರಿಗಿದ್ದ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನು ಯಾವತ್ತಾದರೂ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ನಲವತ್ತೈದರಲ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ಮೋಸದಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರ ಆಕ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಯಿತು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವರು ಸತ್ತೋದ್ರು ಅನ್ನೋ ಕಥೆಯನ್ನು ಎಷ್ಟು ವರ್ಷಗಳ ಕಾಲ ನಂಬಿಸಿದ್ರು ನಂಬಿಸುವ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಎಷ್ಟು ಮಾಡಿದರು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಕಾಗಿರುವಂಥ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟನ್ನು ಎಷ್ಟು ಕೊಡೋ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಮಾಡಿದರು ಬಿಲ್ಡಪ್ ಮಾಡಿದರು ಆದರೆ ಈ ದೇಶ ನಂಬಲಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕೆ ನಂಬಲಿಲ್ಲ ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟೀಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ದೇಶ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹೋಗಬೇಕಾದಾಗ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಹೋಗಿದ್ರು ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಅವ್ರ ಮನೆ ನೋಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಯಾವತ್ತಾದರೂ ಕಲ್ಕತ್ತಾಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಬನ್ನಿ ಎರಡು ಮನೆಗಳನ್ನು ಕಲ್ಕತ್ತಾದಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಲೇಬೇಕು ನೀವು ಒಂದು ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ್ರ ಮನೆ ಎರಡನೇದು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಮನೆ ಭಾಳ ದೂರ ಇಲ್ಲ ಎರಡು ಹತ್ತಿರದಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಅದ್ಭುತವಾಗಿ ಎರಡನ್ನು ಮೈಂಟೈನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರು ಮನೆಯೊಳಗೆ ಸೇರಿಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಮನೆಯೊಳಗೆ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಗೃಹ ಬಂಧನ ಇತ್ತು ಮನೆಯಿಂದ ಹೊರಗೆ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಕೂತ್ಬಿಟ್ರು ಅವರು ಮುಂದೇನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಿದ್ದಿದ್ದು ಇವರ ತಾತ ಅಂದರೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಅವರ ಅಣ್ಣ ಶರತ್ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರಿಗೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಪ್ರತಿನಿತ್ಯ ಅವ್ರ ಜೊತೆ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಿದ್ರು ಹದಿನೈದು ಹದಿನಾರು ದಿನಗಳ ಕಾಲ ಪೊಲೀಸರಿಗೆ ಹೇಳಲಾಯಿತು ಅವರು ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಬರ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರು ತಂಪಾಡಿಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ತಟ್ಟೆನ ನಾವು ಕೆಳಗಿಂದ ತಳ್ತಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಅಷ್ಟೊತ್ತಿಗೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರಿಗೆ ಗಡ್ಡ ಬಂದಿತ್ತು ಒಂದು ಕಪ್ಪು ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಹಾಕ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಒಂದು ಕಪ್ಪು ಕಾರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂಬಾಸಿಡರ್ ಕಾರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರು ಒಂದಿನ ನಾಪತ್ತೆ ಆಗಿಬಿಟ್ರು ಪಕ್ಕದಲ್ಲಿದ್ದ ಪೊಲೀಸರಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತೂ ಆಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಮೂರ್ನಾಲ್ಕು ದಿನ ಆದಮೇಲೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ರಣ್ಣ ಹೇಳಿದರು ಯಾಕೋ ನಿನ್ನೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟ ತಟ್ಟೆ ಒಳಗೆ ಹೋಗಲೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವನು ಊಟನೇ ಮಾಡ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಏನಾಯಿತು ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಮೂರ್ನಾಲ್ಕು ದಿನ ಆಗೋಗಿತ್ತು ಅಷ್ಟೊತ್ತಿಗೆ ಪೊಲೀಸರು ಬಾಗಿಲನ್ನು ಒಡೆದ್ರು ಒಳಗಿಂದ ಲಾಕ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ವೆಲ್ ಪ್ಲ್ಯಾನ್ಡ್ ಬಾಗಿಲನ್ನು ಒಡೆದು ಒಳಗೆ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಪೊಲೀಸರು ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡು ತೀರಾ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಭೂಮಿಯೊಳಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿರ್ಬೇಕೇನು ಅಂತ ದೇವರ್ ರಿಲ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಏನೋ ಆಗೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ಏನೋ ಹೋಗಿರಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಮರೆತುಬಿಟ್ರು ಈ ದೇಶ ಅನ್ಕೊಳ್ತು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಏನೋ ಆಗೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ಆಗಿಬಿಟ್ಟಿರಬೇಕು ಎಲ್ಲ ವಾತಾವರಣ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹೋಗಿರಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರು ಬರ್ಲಿನ್ ಹೋದರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಟ್ಲರ್ನ ಭೇಟಿ ಮಾಡಿದರು ಎಲ್ಲ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ನಾಯಕರುಗಳು ಜಗ ಜಾಗತಿಕ ಮಟ್ಟದ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ನಾಯಕರುಗಳನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಭೇಟಿ ಮಾಡಿ ಫೈನಲಿ ಬರ್ಲಿನ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಅನುಮತಿ ಪಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಸಿಂಗಾಪುರದಿಂದ ಆಜಾದ್ ಹಿಂದ್ ಸೇನೆಯ ಒಂದು ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಚಾಲು ಮಾಡಿ ಆ ರೇಡಿಯೋಕ್ಕೆ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ರು ಆದರೆ ಆಶ್ಚರ್ಯ ಅಂದರೆ ಅದರ ಅದರ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತಿ ಹೆಂಗಿತ್ತು ಅಂದರೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಕೇಳ್ತಿದ್ರು ಅಂದರೆ ಆ ನಂತರ ಹಾಫ್ ಡೇ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಂ ಅನ್ನು ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಐ ಎನ್ ಎನ್ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಾಯ್ತು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರ ಮೊದಲನೇ ಭಾಷಣ ಐ ಎನ್ ಎ ರೇಡಿಯೋದಿಂದ ಬಂತು ನಾನು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರ ಅವತ್ತು ಮಾತನಾಡಿದಾಗ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಕೋಟ್ಯಂತರ ಜನ ರೇಡಿಯೋದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರಾಮಾಣಿಕವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ನನಗೆ ಈಗಲೂ ರೋಮಾಂಚನ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅವತ್ತು ಕೇಳಿದವ್ರ ಕತೆ ಏನಾಗಿರ್ಬೇಡ ಮೊದಲನೇ ಬಾರಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಕೇಳಿದ
ಯಾವ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಅವರನ್ನ ತನ್ನವರು ಅಂತ ಕರ್ಕೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತೋ ಆ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಯ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಲೀಡರ್ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ವೈಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಅದೇ ಜೆ ಎನ್ ಯು ಹೋಗಿ ಆ ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಪರವಾಗಿ ನಿಂತುಕೊಂಡು ಆ ದೇಶದ್ರೋಹಿಗಳ ಪರವಾಗಿ ನಿಂತುಕೊಂಡು ಇಂಥವರನ್ನ ಸಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ದೇಶದ್ರೋಹ ಅಂತ ಈ ಇಡೀ ದೇಶದ ನೂರ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೆಂಟು ಕೋಟಿ ಜನರನ್ನ ಅವಮಾನಿಸ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ನಾಚಿಕೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ನನಗೆ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ದೆಹಲಿಯ ಜನರಿಗೆ ಯಾರನ್ನ ಏನಾಗಿದೆಯೋ ಯಾರಾದರೂ ಆಪ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟರ್ ಇದ್ರೆ ಬೇಜಾರು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಡಿ ಐ ಎಂ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಆಪ್ನ ಕಾರಣದಿಂದಾಗಿ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಅನ್ನು ವಹಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ದೆಹಲಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿ ಆಗಿ ಕೂತಿರುವಂತಹ ಅರವಿಂದ್ ಕೇಜ್ರಿವಾಲ್ ಒಂದು ಟ್ವೀಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆ ಟ್ವೀಟ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅರವಿಂದ್ ಕೇಜ್ರಿವಾಲ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಎಸ್ ಟೆರರಿಸಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟೆರರಿಸಮ್ ಒಳ್ಳೇದಲ್ಲ ಆದರೆ ಅದರ ನೆಪ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಈ ಹುಡುಗರನ್ನ ಸಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದರೆ ನೀವು ತುಂಬಾ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಪರಿಣಾಮವನ್ನು ಎದುರಿಸಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ಮೋದಿಜಿ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಎಚ್ಚರಿಕೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಯಾರೋ ಒಬ್ರು ಇತ್ತೀಚೆಗೆ ತಮಾಷೆಯ ಟ್ವೀಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಹೌದು ಜೈಕಾ ಅನ್ನೋ ರೋಗ ಕೆಟ್ಟದ್ದು ಆದರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ನೆಪ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಸೊಳ್ಳೆಗಳನ್ನೇನಾದರೂ ಮಟ್ಟ ಹಾಕ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂದರೆ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ಮೋದಿಜಿ ಹುಷಾರು ನಿಮಗೆ ಅಂತ ಏನ್ ಅವಸ್ಥೆ ಇದು ಯಾವ ಯೋಗ್ಯತೆ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳದ್ದು ಯಾವ ಯೋಗ್ಯತೆ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳದ್ದು ನಯಾ ಪೈಸೆ ದೇಶದ ಕುರಿತಂತೆ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ನಾವು ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡ್ವಿ ಇನ್ನು ಈ ಶೃಂಗಾರ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಸಾಕು ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ರು ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ರು ಮರಾಠಿ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಸಮ್ಮೇಳನದ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಒಂದು ಮಾತು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿರುವಂತ ಮಾತು ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಜರ್ಮನಿಯವರು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಾರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸೋತಿದ್ದು ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ನಿನ ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ನಿನ ಶತ್ರುಗಳಿಗೆ ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ನಿನ ಸೈನಿಕರಿಗೆ ಸೋತಿದ್ದು ಜರ್ಮನಿಯ ಜನ ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ನಿನ ಬಾಯೋನೆಟ್ಗಳಿಗಲ್ಲ ಬಾಯೋನೆಟ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನ್ ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಗನ್ಗಳ ಮುಂದಿರುವಂತ ಚೂರಿ ಅಂತ ದಿನ ಬಾಯೋನೆಟ್ ಅಂತ ಕರೀತಾರೆ ಜರ್ಮನಿ ಸೋತಿದ್ದು ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ನಿನ ಬಾಯೋನೆಟ್ಗಳಿಗಲ್ಲ ಬದಲಾಗಿ ಜರ್ಮನಿಯ ಜನ ಬರೆದಿರುವಂತ ಸಾನೆಟ್ಗಳಿಗೆ ಎಂದರು ಸಾನೆಟ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಹದಿನಾಲ್ಕು ಸಾಲಿನ ಪದ್ಯ ಹದಿನಾಲ್ಕು ಸಾಲುಗಳ ಈ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕಾವ್ಯಗಳನ್ನ ಓದಿಕೊಂಡು ಎಲ್ಲ ತರುಣರು ಪ್ರೇಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಮೈ ಮರೆತರು ಆ ನಂತರ ಬಂದಿರೋ ಆ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕಾವ್ಯಗಳೇ ಅವರನ್ನ ಸೋಲಿಸ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಅಂತ ತುಂಬಾ ಗಂಭೀರವಾದ ಮಾತು ಹೇಳಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿನ ಸಾಹಿತಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಸಾಕು ಮಾಡಿ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಎಟ್ಟು ಅಂತ ಬರೀತೀರಾ ಕ್ರಾಂತಿ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಬರೀರಿ ಇನ್ನು ಮೇಲೆ ಅಂತ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅವತ್ತು ಸಾವರ್ಕರ್ ಹೇಳಿದ ಮಾತಿತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಇವತ್ತು ಮತ್ತೆ ಮೊಳಗಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆ ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಹದಿನಾಲ್ಕು ಅಂತ ಕೈಯಲ್ಲೊಂದು ರೋಸ್ ಹಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಜೊಲ್ಲು ಸುರಿಸ್ತಾ ಯಾವುದೋ ಹುಡುಗಿ ಹಿಂದೆ ಒಬ್ಬ ಹುಡುಗ ಹುಡುಗನಿಂದ ಬಂದು ಹುಡುಗಿ ಹೋಗೋದನ್ನ ಎಷ್ಟು ವೈಭವೀಕರಿಸ್ತಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಪ್ರಾಮಾಣಿಕವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳಬಲ್ಲೆ ನೀವು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನ ಯಾವ್ದಾವ್ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ಗಳು ಅಂತ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೋ ಆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ಗಳ ಬೈ ಹೋಗಿ ಬನ್ನಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ಗಳು ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ತ್ ವ್ಯಾಲೆಂಟೈನ್ಸ್ ಡೇ ಅನ್ನೋ ಕಾರಣಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಆಫರ್ ಘೋಷಣೆ ಮಾಡ್ತವೆ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಆಫರ್ ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಯಾವ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ಗಳು ನಡೆಯಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ ಯಾವ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಯೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋಂತ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಲೋಚನೆ ತಂದಿರಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಈ ದೇಶದ ತಾರುಣ್ಯವನ್ನು ನಾಶ ಮಾಡುವಂತ ಆಲೋಚನೆ ಅಲ್ಲದೆ ಮತ್ತೇನೂ ಅಲ್ಲ ಹಿಂಗಾಗಿ ನಾವು ಕಳೆದ ವರ್ಷದಿಂದ ಆಲೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ಎಸ್ ನಾವು ವಿರೋಧ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರೇಮವನ್ನು ವಿರೋಧಿಸುವ ನಾಡು ಭಾರತ ಅಲ್ವೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ ಪ್ರೇಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಮೈ ಮರೆತಿರುವಂತ ಅನೇಕ ರಾಧೆಯರ ಅನೇಕ ಗೋಪಿಯರ ಕಥೆಗಳನ್ನ ಕೇಳಿ ಬೆಳೆದಿರುವಂತ ಈ ನಾಡಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೇಮವನ್ನು ವಿರೋಧಿಸೋ ಪರಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೆ ಪ್ರೇಮವನ್ನ ಪ್ರೇಮವನ್ನ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮಟ್ಟಕ್ಕೆ ಏರಿಸಿದ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಭಾರತ ಪ್ರೇಮವನ್ನ ದೇಹ ಮಟ್ಟಕ್ಕೆ ಇಳಿಸಿದಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಾವು ಆಲೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ದೇಹ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಅಲ್ಲ ಈಗಿನ ಅಗತ್ಯ ದೇಶ
ತೀರಲಾಗದ ಆನಂದ ಒಬ್ಬ ಒಬ್ಬ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರ ಮೊಮ್ಮಗನ ಪಕ್ಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡಿರೋದು ಅಂತಂದರೆ ನೆನ್ನೆನೂ ಈ ಥ್ರಿಲ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ನನಗೆ ಇವತ್ತಿಗೂ ಅದೊಂದು ಥ್ರಿಲ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಇದೆ ಭಾಳ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಇದೆ ನನಗೆ ಆದರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ನಿಲ್ಸಲ್ಲ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೀಟ್ ದ ಹೀರೋ ಅಂತ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಅಂತ ಇದು ನಿನ್ನ ಮುಂದೆ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಪ್ರತಿ ಎರಡು ತಿಂಗಳಿಗೊಮ್ಮೆ ಕನಿಷ್ಠ ಪಕ್ಷ ನಾವು ಒಬ್ಬೊಬ್ಬ ಹೀರೋನ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತೀವಿ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಹೀರೋ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಅನ್ನಾದರೂ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತೀವಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಂದಿರೋದು ಯಾರು ಗೊತ್ತೇನು ಸಾವಿರದ ಎಂಟುನೂರ ಐವತ್ತೇಳರ ಸಂಗ್ರಾಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷರ ವಿರುದ್ಧ ಇಡೀ ಸಂಗ್ರಾಮ ಮುಗಿದ ನಂತರವೂ ಒಂದು ವರ್ಷ ಕಾದಾಟ ಮಾಡಿದ ತಾತ್ಯಾಟೋಪೆ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರ ಇನ್ನೂರನೇ ಜಯಂತಿ ಅವರ ಮರಿ ಮೊಮ್ಮಗ ಇನ್ನೂ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ತು ಮಿತ್ರರೇ ಹೀರೋಗಳು ಅಂದರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಮಾತ್ರ ಅಲ್ಲ ಹೀರೋಗಳು ಅಂದರೆ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಸೈನಿಕರು ಕೂಡ ಹೌದು ನಿಮಗೊಂದು ಆಹ್ವಾನ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಇವತ್ತೇ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಡೇಟ್ ಅನ್ನು ಬ್ಲಾಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಹದಿನೈದನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಈ ನಾಡಿನ ಒಬ್ಬ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಸೇನಾನಿ ಈ ದೇಶಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಕೊಟ್ಟ ಎನ್ ಎಸ್ ಜಿ ಕಮಾಂಡೋ ಇದ್ರು ಅವ್ರ ಹೆಸರು ಸಂದೀಪ್ ಉನ್ನಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ್ ಅಂತ ಸಂದೀಪ್ ಉನ್ನಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ್ ಬರ್ತ್ಡೇನ ಪ್ರತಿ ವರ್ಷ ಅವ್ರ ಮನೆ ಎದುರಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಆಚರಣೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅವ್ರ ತಂದೆ ತಾಯಿ ಕಳೆದ ವರ್ಷ ನಾವು ಆಚರಣೆ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಏಳ್ನೂರ ಎಂಟುನೂರು ಜನ ಸೇರಿದ್ರು ಅವರು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿರಲ್ಲ ಇಷ್ಟು ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಸಂಖ್ಯೆ ಅಂತ ಏಳ್ನೂರ ಎಂಟುನೂರು ಜನ ಬಂದಿದ್ರು ನನಗೆ ಅವ್ರ ತಾಯಿ ಕೈ ಹಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೇಳಿದರು ಚಕ್ರವರ್ತಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಉಸಿರಿರೋವರೆಗೂ ನೀವುಗಳೇ ಈ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಗಣಪ ಅಂತ ನಂಗೆ ಕಣ್ಣಲ್ಲಿ ನೀರು ಬಂದ್ಬಿಡ್ತು ವಾ ಯುವ ಬ್ರಿಗೇಡ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಉಸಿರಿರೋವರೆಗೂ ನೀವೇ ಈ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಡ್ತೀರಾ ಅಂತ ನಾನಂದೇ ನೀವು ಕೇಳೋದು ಹೆಚ್ಚೋ ನಾವು ಮಾಡೋದು ಹೆಚ್ಚೋ ಯಾವ ತಂದೆ ತಾಯಿ ತಮ್ಮ ಮಕ್ಕಳನ್ನು ಕಳ್ಕೊಂಡ ನಂತರ ಊರೂರಿಗೂ ತಿರುಗಾಡ್ತಾ ತರುಣರಿಗೆ ಪ್ರೇರೇಪಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಹಿಂಗೆ ಬದುಕಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೋ ಅವರಿಗೋಸ್ಕರ ನಾವು ಒಂದಿನ ಕೊಡಲಿಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ವೇನು ನಾವು ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ಇನ್ನು ಮುಂದೆ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಹದಿನೈದು ನಮ್ಮ 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 ಡೈರಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಅದನ್ನು ನಾವು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮನೆ ಎದುರುಗಡೆ ಕಳಿತೀವಿ ಸಂದೀಪನ ಹೆಸರು ಸಂದೀಪ್ ಉನ್ನಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ್ ಅವರ ಹೆಸರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಈ ದೇಶಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಕೊಟ್ಟಂತ ಈ ತರ ಅಸಂಖ್ಯ ಸೈನಿಕರನ್ನ ನೆನಪಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವಂತ ಅಂತ ಸೈನಿಕರ ಜೊತೆ ಕಾಲ ಕಳೆಯುವಂತ ವಾತಾವರಣವನ್ನ ರೂಪಿಸಿಕೊಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ನಿಶ್ಚಯ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ನನ್ನ ನೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಮಿತ್ರರೇ ಎಲ್ಲ ತರುಣರು ಬ್ಲಾಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಹದಿನೈದು ಮಂಗಳವಾರ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಇಸ್ರೋ ಲೇಔಟ್ ಯಲಹಂಕಾದಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುವಂತ ಇಸ್ರೋ ಲೇಔಟ್ ನ ಸಂದೀಪ್ ಉನ್ನಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ್ ಅವರ ಮನೆ ಎದುರುಗಡೆ ಅರ್ಧ ದಿನ ಕಳೆಯೋಣ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರ ಮಾತುಗಳನ್ನು ಕೇಳೋಣ ಈ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೊಬ್ಬರು ಒಬ್ಬರು ಸೈನಿಕರು ನನ್ನ ಮಿತ್ರ ಸುನೀಲ್ಗೆ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿದ್ರು ಅವರು ವಿಕ್ರಮ್ ಬಾತ್ರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಕಾರ್ಗಿಲ್ ಯುದ್ಧದಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ ಹೀರೋ ವಿಕ್ರಮ್ ಬಾತ್ರನ ಆತ್ಮೀಯ ಮಿತ್ರ ಇದೇ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನಲ್ಲಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಾವು ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತೀವಿ ನಿಜವಾದ ಹೀರೋಗಳನ್ನು ನೋಡಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ದಿನ ಅಂತ ಎಷ್ಟು ದಿನ ಅಂತ ಎಷ್ಟು ದಿನ ಅಂತ ದೇಶ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡಿರೋ ಅಮೀರ್ ಖಾನ್ ಶಾರುಖ್ ಖಾನ್ ನೇ ನೋಡ್ತೀವಿ ಸಾಕಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಅವನಂತೂ ಪುಣ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಬೆಡ್ರೂಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಂಡತಿ ಜೊತೆ ಮಾತಾಡಿದನ್ನ ತಗೊಂಡ್ ಬಂದು ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಟಿ ವಿ ಮುಂದೆ ಹೇಳ್ದ ಅದ್ ಹೇಳೋ ಸಂಗತಿಯೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಂಡತಿಗೆ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಫೀಲ್ ಆಗಿದೆಯಂತೆ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಂತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ದ ಅದ್ರ ನೆನ್ಪಿಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಹನುಮಂತಪ್ಪ ಅನ್ನುವಂತ ಈ ನಾಡಿನ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಸೈನಿಕನ ಶವ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋದಾಗ ಅವನ ಹೆಂಡತಿ ನೋಡೋ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿತ್ತು ಮಾರನೇ ದಿನ ಅವನ ಹೆಂಡತಿನ ಪ್ರೆಸ್ನವ್ರು ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಿನ್ ನಿಂಗೆ ಹೆಂಗ್ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತಮ್ಮ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನೋವಾಗಿದೆ ನಿಜ
ಮಿತ್ರರೇ ಹೊಸ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಕಟ್ಟಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆ ಈ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಹೆಂಗಿರಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಈ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರವನ್ನು ಕಂಡಾಗ ಜಗತ್ತು ನತಮಸ್ತಕವಾಗಬೇಕು ಹೀಗಾಗಿಯೇ ಇದೊಂದು ಅದ್ಭುತವಾದ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ನಂಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ನೋಡಿದವ್ರು ಅಂದ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಏನು ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಇದು ಅಂತ ಹೌ ಮೈ ಲವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ನೇಷನ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಟ್ರೀ ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ವಿಶ್ವಗುರು ಅಂದರೆ ಒಂದು ವಿಶಾಲವಾದ ಮರ ಅಂತ ಅನೇಕರಿಗೆ ಆಶ್ರಯ ಕೊಡಬಲ್ಲಂಥ ಮರ ನನ್ನ ಭಾರತ ವಿಶ್ವಗುರು ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಈ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮುಗಿದಿದ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಎದ್ದು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ಬೇಡಿ ಈ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಹತ್ತಿರಕ್ಕೆ ಬನ್ನಿ ಈ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ನ ಕಲ್ಪನೆ ನನ್ನ ಮಿತ್ರ ಸುನೀಲ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಸುಂದರವಾಗಿ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಈ ಇಡೀ ಮರ ಒಂದು ಬೀಜ ಕೆಳಗೆ ತೋರಿಸಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆ ಬೀಜದಿಂದ ಮರ ಹುಟ್ಟುತ್ತೆ ಮರದ ತುದಿ ಯಾರಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬು ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದರ ಮೇಲೆ ಐ ಎನ್ ಎ ಐ ಎನ್ ಎ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಇಲ್ಲಿರುವಂಥ ಒಂದು ಸಂಘಟನೆಯೂ ಹೌದು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸರು ಕಟ್ಟಿದ ಸೈನ್ಯವೂ ಹೌದು ಅದರ ಮೇಲೆ ಐ ಎನ್ ಎ ಈ ಬೀಜದಿಂದ ಇಷ್ಟು ವಿಶಾಲವಾದ ವೃಕ್ಷ ಅದರ ತುದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಬಾಬುನೂ ಬಂದರು ಅದೇ ಮತ್ತೆ ಬೀಜ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ವೃಕ್ಷವಾಗಿ ಹುಟ್ಟುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಭಾರತ ಈ ಥರದ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗಿದೆ ಇದರ ಇದರ ಈ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಯಾವತ್ತಿಗೂ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ತೋರಿಸೋ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಅದರ ಒಂದಿಡೀ ತುದಿ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಋಷಿ ಮುನಿಗಳ ಪರಂಪರೆಯನ್ನು ತೋರಿಸಿದರೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಕಡೆ ಆನಂದದಿಂದ ಕುಣಿತಾ ಇರುವಂಥ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯ ಜನಾಂಗ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿ ಆನಂದ ಆ ಖುಷಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಸುಂದರವಾಗಿ ತುಂಬಿಕೊಂಡಿದೆ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ವಿಶ್ವಗುರು ಭಾರತದ ಕಲ್ಪನೆಯನ್ನು ಆತ ತನ್ನ ಕಲಾಕೃತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಭಾಳ ಸುಂದರವಾಗಿದೆ ಒಂದು ಕಡೆ ಧರ್ಮಚಕ್ರ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಕಡೆ ಕಾಲಪುರುಷ ಇಬ್ಬರು ನಿಂತುಕೊಂಡು ಈ ದೇಶವನ್ನು ವಿಶ್ವಗುರು ಆಗೋದನ್ನು ಖಾತ್ರಿ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನು ಸಾಬೀತುಪಡಿಸ್ತಾ ನಿಂತಿದ್ದಾರಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಇವತ್ತಿನ ದಿನದ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಭಾವಿಸ್ತೀನಿ ಈ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಎದುರಿಗೆ ತಂದ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಮಿತ್ರರೇ ನಾವು ತುಂಬ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಡ್ತೀವಿ ನಾವು ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಆ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮು ನಂಗೆ ಯಾರೋ ಹೇಳಿದರು ಇದೊಂಥರ ಸ್ಲಮ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಇದ್ದಂಗಿದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ನೀವು ಅಂತ ನಂಗೆ ಭಾಳ ಕೋಪ ಬಂತು ನನ್ನ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಲಮ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಭಾವಿಸೋನು ನನ್ನ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವುದೇ ಜಾಗಕ್ಕೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಹೋಗೋ ಯೋಗ್ಯತೆ ಇಲ್ವೋ ಅದನ್ನು ಸ್ಲಮ್ ಅಂತ ಕರೆದು ಬಿಟ್ಬಿಟ್ವಿ ಹಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಭಾಗವನ್ನು ಇವತ್ತಿಗೂ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯಿಂದ ಗೌರವಿಸ್ತೀನಿ ಈ ಜಾಗ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಈ ಜಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೂ ಬಂದಾಗ ಯಾಕೋ ತುಂಬ ಆಗ್ತಿತ್ತು ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ತು ಆದರೆ ಒಂದು ಕಾಲು ಗಂಟೆ ಅವ್ರ ಭಾಷಣ ನೀವು ಕೇಳುವಾಗ ನಿಶಬ್ದತೆ ಇತ್ತಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ತು ಯಾವುದು ಜಾಗ ಕೆಟ್ಟದ್ದಲ್ಲ ಪವಿತ್ರೀಕರಿಸುವವರ ಯೋಗ್ಯತೆ ಎಂಥದ್ದಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ಜಾಗ ನಿಶ್ಚಯ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಇಡೀ ಭಾರತವನ್ನು ಅಲಂಕರಿಸಿಕೊಂಡಿವೆ ಅದು ತಾಯಿ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಗುಣಗಾನ ಮಾಡುವಂಥದ್ದು ನಾನು ಆಸೆ ಪಡ್ತೀನಿ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ನಂತರ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ವಂದನಾರ್ಪಣೆ ಆದಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ಒಂದೇ ಮಾತ್ರ ಗೀತೆ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದೇ ಮಾತ್ರ ಗೀತೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಎದ್ದು ನಿಂತು ಗೌರವಿಸ್ತೀವಿ ಅದಾದಮೇಲೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಬಂದು ಒಮ್ಮೆ ಸ್ಟೇಜನ್ ನೋಡಿ ಒಮ್ಮೆ ಭಾರತ್ ಮಾತೆಗೆ ಒಂದು ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡೆ ಮನೆಗೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನನ್ನ ವಿನಂತಿ ಇದೆ ಈ ವಿನಂತಿಯ ನಡುವೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪುಟ್ಟ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಇದಾಗಿದ್ದ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಒಂದೇ ಒಂದು ನಿಮಿಷದ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಆ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಏನು ಗೊತ್ತೇನು ಭಾಳ ಜನ ನನಗೆ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ತಲೆ ತಿಂತಿದ್ರು ನೀವು ಯುವ ಬ್ರಿಗೇಡ್ ಏನು ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಿ ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತೇ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನನ್ನ ಹಾಸನದ ಮಿತ್ರ ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಮತ್ತು ಅವನ ಟೀಮ್ ಅವನಿನ್ನೂ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಓದ್ತಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಓದಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಅವನೊಂದು ಕಂಪನಿ ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆ್ಯಪ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಮಾಡುವಂಥ ಕಂಪನಿ ಆ ಹುಡುಗ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಓದ್ತಾ ಓದ್ತಾ ಯುವ ಬ್ರಿಗೇಡ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಆ್ಯಪನ್ನು ತಯಾರು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆ ಆ್ಯಪನ್ನು ಈಗ ಲಾಂಚ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಇನ್ನು ಒಂದು ನಿಮಿಷದ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಲಾಂಚನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸ್ತೀವಿ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಪಾಟ್ ಗೂಗಲ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಸ್ಟೋರಿಗೆ ಹೋಗಿ ನೀವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಆ್ಯಪ್ ಡೌನ್ಲೋಡ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಸಾಕು ನಮ್ಮ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕ
Mataki! One day! One day! Jai Hind!